Welcome to St. Anthony's Parish and a warm welcome to our online viewers. Our opening song is number 536 in your Red Gather book, Praise to the Lord Almighty. Okay, go ahead, Johnny. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. My soul, the praise Him, for He is your health and salvation. Come all who hear, brothers and sisters. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. God is in his holy place. God, he unites those who dwell in his house. He himself gives might and strength to his people. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, in my thoughts, through my fault, through my fault, through my muscle. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord, God, heaven, the King, all God Almighty. 
protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy. Bestow in abundance your mercy upon us, and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. In those days, the Lord said, the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is so great and their sin so grave that I must go down and see whether or not their actions fully correspond to the cry against them that comes to me. I mean to find out. While Abraham's visitors walked on farther toward Sodom, the Lord remained standing before Abraham. Then Abraham drew nearer and said, Will you sweep away the innocent with the guilty? Suppose there were 50 innocent people in the city. Would you wipe out the place rather than spare it for the sake of the 50 innocent people within it? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to make the innocent die with the guilty, so that the innocent and the guilty would be treated alike. Should not the judge of all the world act with justice? The Lord replied, If I find 50 innocent people in the city of Sodom, I will spare the whole place for their sake. Abraham spoke up again. See how I am presuming to speak to my Lord, though I am but dust and ashes. What if there are five less than 50 innocent people? Will you destroy the whole city because of those five? He answered, 
I will not destroy it if I find 45 there. But Abraham persisted, saying, What if only 40 are found there? He replied, I will forbear doing it for the sake of the 40. Then Abraham said, Let not my Lord grow impatient if I go on. What if only 30 are found there? He replied, I will forbear doing it if I can find but 30 there. Still Abraham went on, Since I have thus dared to speak to my Lord, what if there are no more than 20? The Lord answered, I will not destroy it for the sake of the 20. But he still persisted, Please let not my Lord grow angry if I speak up this last time. What if there are at least 10 there? He replied, For the sake of those 10, I will not destroy it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, on the day reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, you were buried with him in baptism, 
in which you are also raised with him through faith in the power of God, who raised him from the dead. And even when you were dead in transgressions and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he brought you to life along with him, having forgiven us all our transgressions, obliterating the bond against us with its legal claims, which was opposed to us. He also removed it from our midst, nailing it to the cross. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray just as John taught his disciples. He said to them, when you pray, say, Father, holy be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins. For we ourselves forgive everyone in debt to us and do not subject us to the final test. And he said to them, suppose one of you has a friend to whom he goes at midnight and says, friend, lend me three loaves of bread for a friend of mine has arrived at my house from a journey and I have nothing to offer him. And he says in reply from within, do not bother me. The door has already been locked and my children and I are already in bed. I cannot get up to give you anything. I tell you, if he does not get up to give the visitor the loaves because of their friendship, he will get up to give them whatever he needs because of his persistence. And I tell you, ask and you will receive, seek and you will find, knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and the one who knocks, the door will be opened. What father among you would hand his son a snake when he asks for a fish, or hand him a scorpion when he asks for an egg? If you then who are wicked, know how to give good things to your children, how much more will the Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? 
The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let's go ahead. Children, come forward for the liturgy of the word. Sorry. There's a story told about a man who ran into a friend of his, and the friend of his had not been to church for some time, had been absenting himself from Mass, and he noticed it, and so he said to the friend, he said, hey, he said, where have you been? I haven't seen you at, at church or at Mass for, for a long time. What's going on? Well, he said, look, he said, why should I come to Mass? He said, uh, the church is full of a lot of rotten sinners looked at the man and said, well, why don't you come back to Mass? After all, there's more room for one more. <laughs> it's true, isn't it? Pope Francis uh, puts it this way. He said, the church is not a museum for saints. The church is a field hospital for sinners. We're all sinners, no matter who we are. We all fall short. We all have our flaws, our foibles, and our failings. We're all in need of healing. We're all in need of forgiveness. We're all in need of being lifted up. We're all in need of being cleansed by the power of God. But no one is exempt. Everyone is flawed. In this day and age, when there is so much focus on the sins, failures, and dysfunction, of many in the church, especially its leaders. Perhaps it's good to pause and reflect on how much we need a church which is a field hospital, seeking healing, forgiveness, and peace for sinners like you and me. And that's in no way to sugarcoat any sins or to overlook uh, the dysfunction and the disgust that sometimes the sins of particular leaders cause us, but it is to pause and to reflect upon the fact that no matter who we are in the church, clergy or lay, no matter what category we're talking about, religious, laity, priests, religious, we're all sinners, and we recognize it, and that's why we need a church, we need a savior. And those who absent themselves because the church is full of, full of sinners, Okay, it really causes you to pause and you wonder, aren't you a sinner too? Shouldn't you feel right at home? D.K. Chesterton, the great English writer, once talked about his conversion to Catholicism. And he wasn't uh, naive. He knew that there's no such thing as a perfect church. And he, he went around church shopping. He went to several Protestant churches, and in every church he went into, Protestant church, he would leave his umbrella at the entrance of the church. And after the service, he'd go back, and every week, there was his umbrella, just where he left it. And so one day, after having visited several Protestant churches and having found his umbrella, he went to a Catholic church for Mass. He put his umbrella in the back of the church. He went to Mass. And afterwards, he came back looking for his umbrella, but someone had stolen it. And so he concluded... If the Catholic Church offers such a generous and open doorway to the rabble, being a home for both sinners and saints, then he said, I have indeed found a home where I could also fumble along my way to the kingdom of God. And it's true. The church is full of saints. Yes, there are plenty of saints in the church, but there are also plenty of sinners too. You name the sin and you can find it. 
among the lay people and among the clergy. The conclusion, there's a home here for all of us because we all need a savior. In this gospel, Jesus gives us the Lord's prayer and he says, forgive us our trespasses for those, as we forgive those who trespass against us, forgiving others. Why, why should we forgive others? Because we're all guilty. No one is so self-righteous that he's above uh, being forgiven by God and in turn forgiving those who are also wounded and in need of forgiveness. To forgive is to understand that we are all in need of a common Heavenly Father who loves us and wants to lift us up. I remember as a child, and you probably experienced it too, uh, when you saw your, your dad when you were a small child, he usually would run up to your father with open arms. Your father would grab you by the arms and lift you up, hold you to the sky. And you would, you would laugh and smile as the father lifted you up. That's what our Heavenly Father does. And that's a tremendous image. We have to run up to him with our arms extended, knowing that we are imperfect knowing that we need a savior, knowing that we are sinners, wanting to be lifted up out of our misery, out of our sin, out of our dysfunction, out of our desperation. And he will lift us up and he'll take us to his arms and holding us up to the sky, we can smile because he's given us his love and a new hope and a new beginning. This church is a, a tremendous reminder to me of uh, how I'm just one sinner among others because I've been in this church most of my life. I was calculating the other day, over half of my life has been spent at St. Anthony's. Over half of my life, not as a pastor, I'm not that old, but anyway, <laughs> as, a, as a child baptized in that font, going to confession in those confessionals, receiving communion, all these sacraments, and then coming back now for 12 years as the pastor, it's, it, it reminds me uh, of that I, that I don't stand apart from you, really. I'm just one of you. I've given, given a great, tremendous, awesome responsibility of being the shepherd of souls, but I'm a sinner just like you. And I don't uh, entertain any misgivings that I don't need to go to confession. In fact, today I'm going down to Conception Abbey to see my spiritual director, which I, who I re visit regularly and go to confession, because I need confession, too. And, and so when I stand in this church, I recognize how much I need a Savior. I always have, do now, and always will. And it's true of you too. But we have to come with open arms and we have to leave all of our, our concerns, our fears, our dysfunction, our sins, all that we are, all that we've been, all that we hope to be here at the altar. Leaving it there with arms un open and our hearts vulnerable to let the Lord lift us up. We have to let go. Are there things in your life that you're will, unwilling to let go of? That you should let go of? Or that I should let go of? We hold on to it. Attitudes, values, priorities that are dysfunction or distorted in some way. Dis something, well, I just can't live without it. The Lord's saying, give it up. Leave it, leave it at the altar. Be willing to leave everything so that I can lift you up give you all that you really need to be the best version of yourself. This poem somebody gave me, I think, says it all about being a child and letting God lift us up, and it goes like this. As children bring their broken toys with tears for us to mend, I brought my broken dreams to God because he was my best friend. But then instead of leaving God in peace, to work alone, I hung around and tried to help with ways that were my own. At last I snatched them back and cried, Lord, how could you be so slow? My child, he said, what could I do? You never did let go. Let go of anything that stands in the way of being totally surrendered into the arms a love of a loving God. Let me hold nothing back, Lord. Everything. My hopes, my fears, my joys, and my sorrows. Everything. I come before you today with open arms to the power of the Holy Spirit of Jesus. May we be lifted up from this altar today 
And if we truly open our minds and hearts to what's going on at this altar, when we do let go, we will know that God is lifting us up like a loving father lifts up his child. I believe in one God, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, not made consubstantial with the Father, to him all things are made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became him. For our sake he was crucified, which is Pilate, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Christ makes a promise. Ask and it will be given. Let us come to our Heavenly Father with trust and confidence that he hears our prayers that a deepening of prayer may spread throughout the church on earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. That planners of economy and industry may turn to the Father who gives us our daily bread. Let us pray to the Lord. For the guidance of the Holy Spirit for our families and for the safety of our military and law enforcement personnel, we pray to the Lord. For the faithfully departed, James Glenn, we pray to the Lord. Lord. For the sick, Bonnie Perdue, Mary Trout Payne, Mary Quinn, Frank Coco, John Yost, Cecilia Acri, and Paul Belden. For these, we pray to the Lord. Lord. And for the special intention of this Mass, George and Mary LaMotta. For these, we pray to the Lord. Lord. God the Father, hear our prayer. Hear us, God the Son. Holy Spirit, hear our prayer. Mercy on your people, Lord. Please join in the offertory song number 600 in your gather book, Seek Ye First. Oh. 
sign fishing this with Dina. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. Pray to the Lord's name. For our good and all the Accept, O Lord, we pray the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just that we should give you thanks and praise, O God Almighty Father, for all you do in this world through our Lord Jesus Christ. For though the human race is divided by dissension and discord, yet we know that by testing us you change our hearts to prepare them for reconciliation. Even more by your spirit you move human hearts that enemies may speak to each other again adversaries join hands and people seek to meet together by the working of your power it comes about O lord that hatred is overcome by love revenge gives way to forgiveness and discord is changed to mutual respect therefore as we give you cease the thanks with the choirs of heaven we cry out to your majesty, and without end, we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In 
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop-elect, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, <coughs> that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb, O Lord.
consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. 
Today's announcements, a, a new youth, a new young adult group is being formed here at St. Anthony's. It meets on Fridays at 6 p.m. in the lower rectory and uh, enjoy fellowship food with your uh, young adult friends. Um, that'll be every Friday at 6 p.m. in the lower rectory. This Friday is First Friday, an additional mass is 7 p.m. with prayers for healing of the sick and a procession of the statue of Our Lady of Fatima. Next Saturday, August 3rd at 8.30 Mass, followed by a rosary, international rosary with different languages. And then after that, there'll be a talk in the lower level of the, of the church on making disciples. Parish picnic also next Saturday from 5.30 to 8 at Columbus Park. Brats and hot dogs will be served, provided by the parish. All are welcome, family fun, 8 30, 5.30 to 8 at Columbus Park. Coffee and donuts available after Masses today in the elevator foyer. And, and uh, finally, a welcome to all of our visitors and guests. We know that a lot of people are traveling these days and sometimes they, they grace us with their presence here at St. Anthony. So a very special, warm St. Anthony's welcome to our visitors and may you have safe and joyful travels. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Sure. St. Michael, the Archangel. Most sacred heart of Jesus, most sacred heart of Jesus, most sacred heart of Jesus, Our Lady of Mount Carmel, St. Joseph, and St. Anthony. Please join in our closing song number 936 in the Bread We Celebrate book, O God Beyond All Praising. praising we worship you today and sing for love amazing that souls cannot repay for we can only wonder at every gift you send and Without end, we lift our hearts before you and wait upon your word. We need a never-ending order, a great mighty Lord. And hear our gracious Savior. 